Hello students. Uh, so today uh, we shall be continuing with our PYQ series. Uh, today's topic is geometry. We have already covered uh, arithmetic PYQs, uh, linear equations and permutations and combinations. Uh, so from today onwards, we shall be continuing with our PYQ series and let us see. <clears throat> this is the first question from CSE 2023. We have a square ABCD and one point is there on each a b and c d and there are two points on b c and d a question is how many distinct triangles you can form out of this uh, six points so we have a square and uh, there are two points here two points here somewhere and there is one point each on uh, these opposite sides we shall name them let us see a b c and d question is these six points one two three 4, 5, 6. Out of these 6 points, how many different distinct triangles can we form? <clears throat> That's a very easy question. But uh, we need to recall that when can we form a triangle and when can we not form a triangle. The only condition uh, that needs to be satisfied for 3 points, 3 chosen points to form a triangle is that they should not be on a same line. So, 3 non-collinear points, any 3 non-collinear points like this will form a triangle and any three points that are collinear that are on the same line they will not form a triangle and this happens because there is some uh, there is a result called as triangle inequality that needs to be satisfied for three points to uh, form a triangle it states that three points will form a triangle when some of the two sides will be greater than the third side and that is true for all the sides and that gets satisfied only when these three points are not on the same line. So the only question in the present scenario that we need to answer is that are there any three points that lie on the same line? So we can clearly see that there are no such three points that are collinear that are on the same line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if you choose any three points, they are always on, they, they are always non-collinear points, which means that out of these six points, we can choose any three points and we'll get a triangle and we'll get a distinct triangle in all those cases. So out of six points, we all we need to do is choose three points and those three points act as a vertices of triangle and we'll get a triangle. So how many ways are there to choose three points out of six given points? It is simply six choose three from our permutations and combination topics. Uh, that choices, number of choices, distinct choices are 6 choose 3, which is nothing but 6 factorial by 3 factorial, 3 factorial, which turn comes out as 20, which is the answer. Now, see in this question, two things are being tested. One, your basic knowledge of uh, geometry. When can we form a triangle? When can we not form a triangle? And your basic knowledge of uh, permutations and combination, which relates to choices. How many choices are being made? So they have they are uh, mixing the mixing two topics that <clears throat> UPSC has started to do in last few years that they have started asking questions from different topics where different topics you student needs to use to come to the right answer. <clears throat> the question itself in itself was very easy, uh, but again uh, to be future ready if the if I modify a question a bit instead of the six points like given case. Had I have, had we have this kind of situation, like these three are collinear and uh, then six points are like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then what would we do? Then question would be, how many distinct triangles can be formed? Uh, so here, what we need to do is we have to just form the triangles as it is, six choose three. That would be number of triangles can be formed in general. But these three points are collinear. So if out of these six, out of these 20 choices, one choice is this three points where triangle cannot be formed. So we need to eliminate that choice and answer would have been 19 there. I am talking about a modification of this problem. But in the given situation, there are no such points. There are no three collinear points. That is why answer would be simply 20. <coughs> Let us see next question. Question is, there are 8 equidistant points on a circle and 
then they are saying how many right angle triangles can be drawn using these points as vertices and taking diameter of a side as a down diameter as a one side of the triangle so what we have we have uh, eight equidistant points on a circle <clears throat> so let me draw a circle uh, Yes, this is a circle and now let us construct a eight equidistant point as per our convenience. Uh, let us see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this kind of system we have, we have a circle and we have eight equidistant point on a circle and they are saying uh, again question is about forming number of triangles but this time the triangle needs to be right angle triangle one and second at least one side of the triangle needs to be diagonal that is the uh, uh, sorry diameter the line passing through center of the circle something like this this is a diameter this needs to be one side of the triangle <coughs> now we have to know only one simple result from our school geometry that if we have a diameter and if we join ends of the diameter with any point on the circumference, any point doesn't matter, that angle is always 90 degree. So, if I join these two points, then this angle is 90 degree. If I join these two points, this angle is also 90 degree because these are any points on the circumference and property is that any points on the circumference we can join to these endpoints, the angle subtended is always 90 degree. So, this is also 90 degree. The question was, how many triangles can be formed out of these 8 points? So, out of 8, we have chosen 2 as ends of the diameter because that is one condition. <coughs> and we need one more point to complete a triangle. So, these are 2 points, we need one more point. We can choose this, this or this. We always have right angle triangle. Also, we can choose this, this or this. So, with one choice of diameter, we can have six right angle triangles. And <coughs> if we have eight equidistant points, how many diameters can we choose? We can choose one, two, this diameter. We can choose this and this second diameter. We can choose this and this third diameter. And we can choose this and this as four diameter. So, there are four choices of diameter and for every choice of diameter, we have six right angle triangles like uh, the, as the question asks. So, we have four, we have four choices of diameter and for each diameter, we have six choices of right angle triangles. So, total answer number of right angle triangle is 24. So, this requires uh, this question actually tests your basic knowledge of geometry from circle. So, you need to know that <coughs> if we have a diameter, then all the points, if you join ends of the diameter to any point on the circumference of a circle, then you will always have a right angle subtended. So, that is why any triangle you choose will be a right angled triangle. <coughs> Very simple question. And uh, in examination hall also, you can do it quickly only if you know this property. Otherwise, you will keep struggling. <coughs> Let us move on. <coughs> uh, this question more than geometry is well of a trial and error kind of question. Let us see. They are saying that we have a rectangular sheet of this size, 20 centimeter length and 8 centimeter breadth. So, we have a rectangular sheet like this, 20 in length, 8 in breadth. <coughs> and then there are two statements, which of them are correct that we need to find out. Question, uh, first statement says, it is possible to cut the sheet into exactly into four square sheets. Now, note that they have not said four equal square sheets. They are just saying four square sheets. So, if you simply try to divide this, this, 
so we have 8 8 8 8 so this 8 plus is 16 out of 20 we have 16 here so this is 4 and uh, we just divide this so this side is 4 this side is 4 this side is 4 this side is 4 this is 4 this is 4 so this is 1 square 2 square 3 square and 4 square so that is why it is simply by playing around a bit you will find out that it is indeed possible to divide this piece of rectangular piece into four equal squares this was not challenging this i, I believe that most students <coughs> would be able to come to that the second thing which was a bit more challenging <coughs> wherein they said that it is possible to cut the sheet into 10 rectangular sheets so now <coughs> this is again 20 and 8 and the question is about 10 rectangular sheet now <coughs> you can try it around a bit but the right way to go about it is because this number is 10 and this side is 20 what we do is we divide this 20 into five equal uh, sh uh, shapes so that each side becomes four one two three four and five so this is four 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 and four and why five because we have 10 here so we can divide it into five or 10 we start with five if not we can go to 10 so that is the first inspiration and once we arrive at this we see that we have five equal rectangles and from our geometry we know that uh, diagonal divides rectangle into two congruent triangles so if we simply draw diagonals like this in each of these rectangle we have these equal triangles 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 that is what we needed cut it into 10 rectangular sheets of equal area they are congruent angles so congruent triangles do have equal area that we know that is why uh, it is indeed possible and both the statements are correct the first statements you can easily arrive at the answer but for second statement uh, you may need you may face dif some difficulty but this 10 is a hint here which uh, might lead you or should lead you to inspiration uh, that you need to cut this Firstly, this broader uh, rectangular sheet into 5 or 10 kind of equal uh, sheets firstly. So, we start with 5. We, once we divide 5, we get 5 equal rectangles of size 4 by 8. And we, from our geometry knowledge, we know that uh, diagonal divides our rectangles in two equal congruent triangles. And that from there, we can have this kind of division. Now, next question. It's a very, very easy question. Again, a mixture of your geometry knowledge as well as percentages. So, mixture of topics is again visible here. What they are saying is, we have a pie chart. Okay. And expenditure on five different items is given. A, B, C, D, E. And each of the B, C, D, E correspond to these angles. So, that we know. So, if you simply draw a pie chart. Pie chart is basically a circular graph where weight of each division corresponds to the central angle and we know that a complete or total angle subtended at a point is 360 degree so we are having five divisions here so let us draw five division not to scale let us just draw a random five division let us say this is a b c d e okay now what we know from our knowledge of geometry that each of this uh, weight of each of this a b c d e here weight is expenditure expenditure on a b c d e is proportionate to the angle subtended by these sectors at the center and we are given that b c d e is what 90 50 45 and 75 and we are asked what is percentage that is spent on a so if we know if we find out this angle <coughs> that corresponds to expenditure on A, then we can find out percentage very easily. And to find out angle that corresponds to A, we simply need to know that the total angle or complete angle subtended at the point is always 360 degree. So, this angle is 360 minus sum of all the four angles, 90 plus 75 plus 45 plus uh, 50. 
it, it comes out as 100. So, this angle that corresponds to A is 100 degrees and percentage that percentage expenditure on item A becomes expenditure on A divided by total. Total, so angle corresponds to A is 100, total angle corresponds to 360 <coughs> into 100 because we want percentage. And if you reduce, 1 0 gets cut, you can divide by 4, uh, you can divide by 4 and you will get 25 into 10 by 9 which is 250 by 9 percent. <coughs> Again a nice question, mixture of two topics but not very difficult, very very easy question. <coughs> okay, let us look at the next question. Here we have a pie diagram that shows percentage of distribution of proteins, water and other dry elements in human body. So, there are three things, proteins, dry elements and other uh, proteins, water and other dry elements. And we are given that proteins correspond to 16%, water corresponds to 70%. So, of course, rest of it corresponds to other dry elements, which is 17 plus 100 minus 70 minus 16. So, which comes out as 14% are other dry elements. Okay. Question, let us see what else it says. Proteins and other dry elements corresponds to P percent. So, proteins plus other dry element corresponds to P percent. So, what is P? It is simply 16 plus 14, <coughs> which is 30 percent is equal to P percent. Question is, what is the central angle of the sector representing <coughs> P on pi diagram? So, on a pi chart, we have three things. We have proteins, we have other dry elements, <coughs> and we have water. Water is 70 percent, that is why it, is, it will occupy most area. And this P is 30, these things taken together. <coughs> Question is, what is this angle? This is 70 percent, this is 30 percent. And total angle we know is 360 degree. So angle would be nothing but 30 percent of <coughs> 360 degree. 70 percent of 360, yoga, 30 percent of 360, this angle. <coughs> now, this is 30 by. <coughs> 100 into 360, which is 36 into 3, <coughs> 108. That would be the answer. Again, very simple question. <coughs> now, let us look at the next question. This question is very simple. This actually does not require you to put pen on paper. All it needs is to you is for you to know few basic things about this kind of division. What they are saying is we are have, they are saying we have three points on a straight line such that this PQ is to QR is the given ratio 3 is to 5. So, we are having <coughs> three points P, there is R and there is point Q <coughs> such that this Q divides P and R in this ratio 3 is to 5. Now, from our basic geometry knowledge, we know that for any given ratio, we can have two possible points that divide uh, given line segment in a given ratio. Here, PR is a given line segment and point Q divides this PR in this ratio 3 is to 5. <coughs> and for, such division can happen either internally or externally. Internally like this, this is point Q1 and another is here is P, here is R, another is here point Q2 can be there such that PQ is divided by QR is again 3 is to 5. <coughs> this is called as internal division and this is called as <coughs> external division. Now question is if N is the number of possible values of this ratio PQ is to PR, there is some other ratio. Depend and of course, that this ratio depends directly on choice of Q. Then, what is n equal to? Now, for internal division, we will have one value of this ratio, and for external division, we will have second value of uh, this ratio. So, there are directly two possibilities. You do not need to calculate the ratio, that is not asked. What is asked is how many possibilities are there. So, because we for every given ratio, we can have two possible values of Q internal division, external division. So, there will be two possible values of this ratio okay, for one corresponding to internal and other the corresponding to <coughs> external division. That is all you need to know that 
given a fixed ratio, we can divide line segment two in two possible ways, internally or externally, and for that answer would be two. <coughs> Let us see next question. This is again intuitive kind of question. You need to play around with a bit, with a bit, and you should get the answer correctly. First, we have given two statements. They are independent statements, and we have to tell which of them are correct and which are not. Question a statement first is the minimum number of points of intersection of square and circle is two. Now they are not saying anything about this square and circle. This square and circle can be intersecting, can be non-intersecting, can be thousands of miles apart. One could be in this classroom, another could be in let us say London or Paris or uh, somewhere else. So they are not saying anything about this uh, square and circle. There is no information given. So we can very much have this as a circle, this as a square. What is the minimum number of points of intersection? Zero. They may not intersect at all. That is also a possibility. Further, even if they are intersecting, even if they are intersecting, they can always intersect in a one single point. They could be tangent to each other. So minimum number of points of intersection are not two, even if they are intersecting. Even if they are intersecting, they can intersect in a single point, but about intersection, there is no information. So, actually, minimum number should be 0, not 2. So, statement 1 is definitely wrong. Statement 2, maximum number of points of intersection of a square and a circle is 8. This is a correct statement and we can have circle like this and a square like this where we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points of intersection. There are no other point. There are no other uh, uh, situations where more intersections can happen. You can imagine that you are bringing this circle inside. So, in uh, slowly, 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 this circle comes entirely inside. And uh, if you want to really see it happening, let us see. Let me draw a square. And let us then construct a circle. So, here, see, zero intersection, zero intersection, zero intersection. Here, we are having two, three, four. This is the maximum intersection. After it, if I uh, make circle even bigger, so let me say, uh, let me take another circle. Then we can have four intersection or zero intersection now again. So if you keep increasing radius of the circle, you will have fewer intersection. If you decrease radius of the circle, then this you will have fewer intersection. So this is the maximum intersection case, which is indeed eight. So statement two is correct. So answer here is B two only. Let us see next question. Uh, this is the last question we are doing uh, PYQs from last five years. So this is the last question for today. We have PQR as three towns and distance between P and Q is 60 kilometers. Distance between P and R is given and Q is in the uh, uh, relative distance, relative directions are given. Very simple question. Just plot whatever is given in the information and you will get the answer. We have this uh, P is there. Q is in the west of P. So, this is P, this is Q. And R is in the south of P. This is R. And because we know that these directions are at 90 degree with each other, uh, we have this kind of situation where PQ is, PQ is uh, 60 and PR is 80. Question is what is distance between Q and R? This is a Pythagoras, uh, Pythagoras triplet question. This is a right angle triangle. So, third side would be root of 60 square plus 80 square, which is root of 10,100. Or directly also, if you know that there are Pythagoras triplets, uh, like 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10. So, base, based on 6, 8, 10, you should have 60, 80. And for 10, you have one more zero, add one more zero to 10. You will get the 100 <coughs> as answer. Every uh, units are everywhere in kilometers. That is why 100 kilometers would be the answer. So, geometry questions, uh, they are asked uh, every now and then 
and they are usually very easy based on very very elementary concepts of geometry uh, which we cover in our classrooms uh, regularly uh, as a part of our foundation csat foundation course uh, the new, new course uh, for csat foundation will begin from 8 january uh, you can come for demo lectures we cover <coughs> csat based on very 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 basic concepts we don't run behind formulas and you will see that almost all the questions that uh, come in UPSC's uh, examination, they are solvable from our very basic knowledge of whatever we have studied in school days. We don't require fancy formulas. It is not that only <coughs> engineering or math background student should qualify. And even most of them are, uh, many of them are failing to qualify means that <coughs> it is not the higher knowledge that is relevant, but the knowledge that we have gained at school level, which we have forgotten, that is more relevant. So you can come to the classes uh, for demo and uh, we shall see that these questions are solvable for, for, from very, very scratch, very, very basic concepts and you don't need to panic about it. You don't need to uh, be uh, <coughs> extra fidgety about it. You don't need to mug up too many formulas. All you need is a calm mind and right direction and we are here to provide you that direction. <coughs> so do come uh, for demo. And uh, I hope to see many of you on 8th of January. Uh, we shall continue with this PYQ series uh, in upcoming days. We are solving PYQs for last five years. Uh, so thank you.